Hey guys, today we're going to talk about integration by substitution. This is an extremely powerful rule that helps you uh, solve a, a myriad of problems that we wouldn't be able to do right now. Okay, this takes into account the chain rule. So if you remember the chain rule, um, when you had a function inside a function, you took the derivative. So if we had something like uh, f of x equals uh, um, sine x squared, we have the chain rule that said that uh, we take the derivative of this would be 2 sine x, but then you had to take the derivative of the inside of the function too, so that was cosine x. Okay? And so um, when we get a function like this and we have to integrate it, uh, up to now you haven't had a technique for doing, for undoing that. So uh, the Integration by substitution is going to help you with something like that, okay? So, anti-differentiation of a composite function. So let g be a function whose range is an interval i, and let f be a function that is continuous on i. If g is differentiable on its domain, and uh, the antiderivative of f is, uh, or capital F is the antiderivative of little f on i, then the following is true. The integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx equals f of g of x big F, g, big f of g of x plus c. So this is kind of like the chain rule in reverse. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Is we're going to let u equal g of x and then we're going to figure out what du is. And then in this case it's going to be g, well it's going to be uh, du is going to be the derivative of g of x, and so we get g prime of x here. And so then, be careful how you say this, the integral of f of u du is big F of u plus c. All right, so you'll see how this goes uh, when you see a couple of problems here. So like this problem here, um, we've got functions inside of functions. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna let we're gonna simplify this. We're gonna let u equal x squared plus one. And then we're gonna figure out what the derivative of that is. du would be 2x dx. Well, check this out now. I can take uh, this function here, let's just rewrite it, the integral of uh, x squared plus one squared times 2x dx, well, this is just that right there, and that is this right here. So I can change this thing to be the integral of u squared du. Well, that's super easy to integrate. That's just one-third u to the third power plus c. We're going to call it c1. Okay, now that I've integrated it, I can go back and I can put u back in there. So remember, u is x squared plus 1. So this is going to be one-third of x squared plus 1 cubed plus c. And you're done. I've integrated this thing. I don't like where that looks. Okay. Let's look at this one. So I've got a function inside of a function, fi uh, 5x inside of cosine x. So let's let u equal 5x. Now du is going to be the derivative of that. It's going to be 5 dx. 
Well, check this out. I got a 5dx and I've got a cosine of 5x, so I can rewrite this problem as the integral of cosine of u du. Now, the integral of cosine u du is sine u plus c. And now I can go back and substitute in uh, the 5x. And I'm done. So I can integrate a whole bunch of things that I wouldn't have been able to integrate before. So this comes in handy sometimes here. K times F, the integral of K times F of X dx, I can take the K out and make it K times the integral of F of X dx. That's the constant multiple rule. We saw that, we saw that last time. Okay, find the indefinite integral, the integral of X times X squared plus one squared dx. Okay, now, I mean, really you could Square this and then multiply it by x, get a polynomial here, and then you could integrate that if you wanted to, but that's a lot of work that you don't have to do because all you have to do is say, you know what, I'm going to let uh, u equal x squared plus 1. So that means that du is 2x dx. Okay, now here's the thing. I'm going to change this integral. Now, here's the problem. I've got a dx and I've got an x. I don't have a 2. Okay? So I need to cancel that 2 out. I'm going to put a 1 half out here in front. That's going to cancel the, the u. So then the x and the dx are just the du out here. And then I've got uh, x squared plus 1 squared. So this is going to be uh, u uh, squared du. Now make sure you understand how I got this out of that. Okay, now I can integrate. So this is uh, equal to one half uh, times, this is going to be u cubed, and I need a one third here. Okay. And so this is going to be um, this is going to be one sixth u cubed plus c, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to substitute in my x squared plus one for my u, and I'm done. Okay, moving right along. So change of variables. With a formal change of variables, you can completely rewrite the integral in terms of u and du or any other convenient variable you want to use. Just make sure you don't use i's or e's or o's. Uh, stay away from the vowels, okay? Uh, because i's, of course, mean something in math that's imaginary numbers. And e is, of course, a number in math. Um, so avoid those. But anything else, you can use whatever you want. Okay? Okay, so then uh, the change of variables techniques. So u equals g of x. So you'd put uh, u in here, and you get f of u du, because the derivative of g of x is g prime of x dx. Okay? And you can integrate that, and there's your answer. All right, so let's look at this one. First thing that I would probably do on this one is I would rewrite this as 2x minus 1 to the 1 half dx. Okay, so we're going to let u be the inside of this, 2x minus 1, and then du is 2dx. 
Okay, I don't have a two here. So that means when I rewrite this, I gotta put a one half out in front to cancel out that two. So then this is gonna be uh, u to the one half du. I can integrate that very simply. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, u to the three halves. I need a two thirds out here to cancel when I, to get a one. Okay, plus c. And then this is going to be, uh, this is going to cancel that too. So this is going to end up being one third u to the three halves plus c. And then I can go ahead and plug back in u, which was 2x minus 1. And I'm done. So, uh, you know, this is not always super easy, but uh, a lot of these problems are not difficult. Okay, here's another one. Find the integral for, of x times the square root of 2x minus 1. So, again, first thing we want to do is uh, rewrite this like that. And then we're going to take the uh, 2x, we're going to let u equal 2x minus 1. <clears throat> Notice I'm always using the function that's on the inside of the other function as my u. So then du, the derivative is 2 dx. Okay, now I kind of have a problem here. Because here's my u and my dx. I can cancel out the 2 with the 1 half, but I'm left with this x. I don't have an x there. So i got to figure out what that x is. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this equation right here. i got to figure out what x is in terms of y. So I know that u is 2x minus 1, so u plus 1 is 2x. And then x is going to be u plus 1 over 2. So now what I can do is uh, I can rewrite this equation. Okay, as u to the 1 half du, which I remember I need to cancel out this 2. I need a 1 half out here. Okay, now I need to deal with this x. Well, x is just going to be u plus 1 over 2. All righty then. Uh, let's see. Next. This 2 I'm going to pull out in front. So this is going to be, I'm going to factor out a 1 half. It's going to be 1 fourth times the integral of u plus 1 times u to the one-half du. And now I can easily um, make this um, u to the three-halves plus u to the one-half. All I did was distribute that u to the one-half inside there. And now I can integrate this thing pretty simply. Okay, so this is going to be 1 fourth times, so this is going to be uh, u to the 5 halves, and I'm going to need a 2 fifths to cancel out the 5 halves when I take the derivative. Okay, this is going to be u to the 3 halves, and I need a 2 thirds out here. Plus c. And now I can go back in and substitute back um, and use this color eagle. So this is going to be one fourth times two fifths times uh, 
2x minus 1 to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds times 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. And really, I could leave it that way, but uh, you know, if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, uh, this up, well, let's see here. This is a nice color. So this would be uh, 2 twentieths or 1 tenth, 2x minus 1 to the 5 halves, plus, uh, let's see, that'd be 2 twelfths, so 1 sixth, 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves, plus C. Okay, so let's double check and make sure that we got that one right real quick. And that would be perfectly correct. All right. So this one was tricky because it had this extra X in there. Now don't freak out about that. You just have to figure out what is X in terms of U. So I get that from this relationship right there. That's how U and X are related. I just need to find out what the X is instead of the U. So I solve for X and then I take that and substitute it in there. Okay, so if I kind of look at things, um, this goes in here. Uh, this goes in for this, but I remember I need the one half out in front to cancel the two. And then uh, uh, this right here goes in there. Okay, find the integral of uh, sine squared 3x times cosine of 3x. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I always like to rewrite this as sine of 3x um, squared cosine 3x dx. Okay, now, uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal sine of 3x and then du is going to be the derivative of that, so that's going to be cosine 3x times 3 dx. That's using the chain rule, remember? So I take the derivative of sine as cosine of whatever this is, and I take the derivative of this as 3 dx. Okay, now this works out good because uh, this goes in here, so this is the integral of u squared. And then uh, this can substitute for this, so that's du, but I do need a one-third to cancel out the three. So this all of a sudden went from something that looked pretty ugly to something that looks really easy. Okay, so this is one-third times, uh, this would be u to the third, but I need another one-third out here. Plus c. So this is uh, 1 ninth u cubed plus c. And then I'm just going to substitute back in my sine of 3x for u. So this is 1 ninth um, sine 3x cubed plus c. And I'm going to write this properly. So this would be 1 ninth sine cubed 3x plus c. And I'm done.
Okay, so guidelines for making change of variables. So choose a substitution, u equals g of x. Usually it is best to choose the inner part of the composite function so that the, such that the quantity raised to the, uh, such as the quantity raised to the power. So if you've got something raised to a power, you use that quantity to be uh, your u. Compute du. So that's going to be g prime x dx. Rewrite the integral in terms of the variable u. Find the resulting integral in terms of u. Replace the u by g of x to obtain the antiderivative in terms of x. And you can check your answer by differentiating. Okay, general power rule. You already know this. Um, so... Um, the integral of g of x to the n, g prime of x to the uh, dx, times dx, is uh, g of x to the n plus 1, so you kick this up one power, and then you've got to have a fraction out here, 1 over n plus 1, so you've got to cancel out um, that n plus 1 plus c. So you can look at this, but you know how to do this already, so don't get freaked out by that. Okay, so here I got a bunch of them. Uh, I got five of them that we can find the, the integrals of. So uh, on this one here, I would let uh, u equal 3x minus 1, and then du is 3x, or is just 3 dx. Okay, so 3 dx, 3 dx, this just becomes uh, the integral of uh, u to the fourth du, which is super easy to integrate. That's 1 fifth u to the fifth plus c. And then I plug back in the 3x minus 1, so this is 1 fifth of 3x minus 1 to the fifth power plus c, and I'm done. Okay, now here I got two functions, and uh, you want to choose for your u the highest powered one because you're going to take the derivative of it, and that's going to reduce the power. So on this one, I would uh, let u equal x squared plus x, and then du is going to be 2x plus 1. Hey, look at that. Oh, forget my, I forgot my dx. Okay, so this is really an easy problem. Uh, this just becomes the integral of uh, u du. Okay, because my du is 2x plus 1 dx, and my uh, u is just this. So this ends up being 1 half u squared plus c. And then I substitute back in the x squared plus x uh, plus c, and I'm done. All right, so here's what I would do. Uh, I would pause the video here, and I would do these last three problems, and then come back here and compare them to what I got and see how you did. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, then jump back on. Okay, so we're going to take C down here because we're running out of room. We're going to say, okay, C is the integral of 3x squared. And I'm going to rewrite this as x cubed minus 2 to the 1 half dx. And I'm going to choose the inside here, so let u equal x cubed minus 2, which means that du is 3x squared dx. So here's my du, and so this ends up being uh, the integral of u to the 1 half du, which is easy to integrate. So that's going to be u to the 3 halves. I need a 2 thirds out here. 
And then I go ahead and plug in my x cubed minus 3. Or x, excuse me, x cubed minus 2. And I got my answer. Not difficult. All right, let's take a look at uh, D. So this is the integral of negative 4x over 1 minus 2x squared squared dx. All right, so I'm going to let u be this part right here. Uh, oops. Stray mark there, let's get rid of that. No confusion. This is going to be uh, 1 minus 2x squared. And then du is going to be uh, negative 4x dx. Well, that was convenient because here's my negative 4x dx. So this just becomes the integral of 1 over uh, u squared du which I'm going to go ahead and rewrite as the integral of u to the negative 2 du. Now remember, when you integrate this, a lot of people, they'll put u to the negative 3 because they think, oh, 3 is bigger than 2. I kick it up, but it's not. This is u to the negative 1, and I need a negative sign out here so that when I take the derivative, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and then I drop the power 1. Okay, so plus c. And then I'm going to substitute back in my uh, 1 minus 2x squared. And I'm going to rewrite that to as uh, negative 1 over 1 minus 2x squared plus c. Now, I would not mark this wrong. That's exactly correct. Um, but it just, I don't know. This is more formal. So, all right, last one, E. So, E is the integral of cosine squared x times sine x. dx. Or I can rewrite this as the integral of cosine x squared sine x dx. I'm telling you, when I, when I was in college, um, it took me a while to make this connection. I don't know why it did, but let me tell you, it made life a whole lot easier when I realized that's, that's what that was. It was one of those epiphanies that you have. It's like an aha moment. The light bulb came on and a whole bunch of stuff made sense. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let u equal cosine x because that's the function inside the other function. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine dx. So now I can rewrite this thing. So this is going to be u squared du, but remember, this is negative sign. I don't have a negative sign here, so I've got to put a negative sign out there to cancel out that negative. And then that is, of course, easy to integrate. That's one-third u to the third power plus c. And then I can substitute back in my cosine. So it's negative one-third uh, cosine cubed x plus c. All right, I hope that matched up with what you got. Okay, change of variables for definite integrals. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, here's the thing. If I do the integral from a to b of f of g of x, g prime of x dx, and I have to use u substitution, okay, so I get the integral of f of u du, 
these numbers here will not be the same as those numbers there. Okay, I have to take these numbers and plug them into g of x and figure out what those are. Now, do you have to do that? No, not really. Because what you can do is you can solve this using u substitution and then put the x's back and then just use these numbers. It's just more work. So if you want less work, you convert these to these and then you can just leave them in f of u instead of have to go back and put it into f of x. So we'll take a look at here, this one here and look at this. So the integral from zero to one of x times x squared plus one cubed dx. So uh, we're gonna go let u equal x squared plus one so that du is two x dx. All right. So when I substitute, all right, I get the integral. I need a, I need a, uh, I need a one half out here in front to cancel out the two because I just got an x. I don't have two x. So this is going to be a u cubed du. Now, if I want these numbers here, I need to take zero and plug it in here for x, because these are x's, okay? So this is, u is going to be uh, 1. And then if I plug in 1, I get 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So this integral is the same as that integral. Now I go ahead and I solve it, okay? So this is 1 half uh, times... This is going to be 1 fourth u to the fourth evaluated from 1 to 2. Now, I don't have to substitute back in the x because I just want to know what the answer is, right? So I could just do this. This is uh, actually 1 eighth u to the fourth evaluated from 1 to 2. So that would be uh, 1 eighth of uh, oops, 2 to the fourth power. Uh, minus one eighth of one to the fourth power, which is going to be let's see, two to the fourth power is sixteen. So sixteen divided by eight is two, and this is going to be uh, one times one eighth. That's going to be one eighth. So this is one and seven eighths, or what is that? Uh, Fifteen eighths. Okay, so I didn't have to substitute back in, but let's say that I did. Let's just confirm that this works. Okay, so let's say that I got my answer here. Um, so it's one half of one fourth u to the fourth power. Uh, and then I just substituted back in. So this would be actually one eighth because I can multiply that and u was uh, x squared plus one the fourth power. Now I would evaluate that from zero to one. Okay, this is more work than just converting those things, but we can go ahead and do this. So this would be uh, one eighth times one squared plus one to the fourth minus one eighth times uh, zero squared plus one to the fourth. So this would be 2 to the 4th power would be 16, divided by 8 would be 2. This would be 1 to the 4th power is 1, minus 1 eighth would be 1 eighth. Oh, that's the same thing I got over there, so that's going to be 15 eighths again. So you can do it however you like. Um, I'm not particular. All right, moving right along. So why don't you take a second, pause the video, and uh, take a look at this, and integrate it, and see what you get, and um, then come back in here and take a look, and we'll see if you got the same thing I did. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to let... Um, sorry about that. We're going to let u equal 2x minus 1. 
and then du is going to be uh, uh, 2 dx. And I want to rewrite this equation as um, x times 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half dx. Okay, so, well, this can go in here easy enough. Problem is I don't have, and, and I can, there's my dx. I'm going to need a half to cancel out the 2. I, I have this x here, so i got to figure out what x is. So I'm going to take uh, this over here. I'm going to solve for x. So there's x. So when I rewrite this, this is going to be the integral of uh, u plus 1 over 2. So there's your x. And then this is going to be uh, u to the negative 1 half du, and I need a 1 half to cancel that 2. So there's my problem. Now, um, also, I don't want to convert multiple times, so I'm going to take 1, and I'm going to plug it in here, and I'm going to get uh, u is going to be 2 times 1 minus 1, which is going to be 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this is going to be a 1 right here still. And then I'm going to plug in the 5. So u equals 2 times 5 minus 1, which is going to be 10 minus 1, which is 9. So that's going to be 9. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to factor out the 1 half here, so I'm going to get 1 fourth. And I'm going to have u plus 1 times u to the negative 1 half du. And remember when I multiply, so I'm going to distribute this in here. When I multiply, I add the exponents. So this is going to be 1 fourth, the integral from 1 to 9, of u to the positive 1 half plus u to the negative 1 half du. Now once I get here, this is super simple. So I integrate this. This is going to be u to the 3 halves, you know, 2 thirds. Uh, this is going to be u to the 1 half. And I'm going to need a 2. So I take the derivative here. This is going to be uh, 6 over 6, which is 1 u to the 1 half. That's going to be 1 half times 2 is 1 u to the negative 1 half. Okay, and I want 1 fourth of all of that. Evaluated from 1 to 9. And I might as well just take care of this by distributing this in here. So uh, if I plug this in here, this is going to be 2 over 12 or 1 sixth u to the 3 halves uh, plus 1 half u to the 1 half evaluated from 1 to 9. Okay, so now I can just plug it in here and figure out this thing. So this is going to be 1 sixth, 9 to the 3 halves, plus 1 half, 9 to the 1 half, minus 1 sixth, 1 to the 3 halves, plus 1 half, 1 to the 1 half. Well, this over here is easy, I mean, because this is just 1 times 1 sixth. This is going to be 1 sixth plus 1 half, which is 2 thirds, by the way. Because this is uh, 3 sixths, so that's 4 sixths, which is 2 thirds. Okay, over here, a little more work to do. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3, cube is 27, so this is uh, 27 over 6. And this is 3, because the square root of 9 is 3, uh, di uh, divided by 2 is 3 halves. If I convert this to 6, just to make this easy, uh, this is going to be 6, and this is going to be 9 sixths. 
So that makes this 27 plus 9 is 36, 6. That's just 6. Actually, we're going to leave it as 36, 6. Because if I convert this to 6, this is 4, 6. Okay. So 36, 6 minus 4, 6 is going to be 32, 32, 6, uh, which I can reduce to uh, 16 thirds. And we're done. So that was example 9. We got 16 thirds. And the answer is 16 thirds. So good, good go. All right. Integration of even and odd functions. So let f be integrable on a closed interval from a to negative a. If f is an even function, so remember that's symmetric to the y-axis. So that's going to be things like this. They're symmetric to the y-axis. Okay. Um, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is just 2 times the integral from 0 to a of f of x. So if you think about it, it makes sense. You know, if I got negative a here and I've got positive a over here, this area is going to be the same as this. So I can just find the area of this right here and double it. If f is a odd function, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is always zero. So if you think about that, it also makes sense. So here is a graph. Remember, an odd function is symmetric to the origin. So that would be something like this. OK. And so if this is negative a and this is a, remember, anything above the x-axis is positive. Anything below the x-axis is negative. So this area here is positive, but this is going to be the exact same area, negative, so that when you add them together, you're going to get zero. All right, so let's evaluate the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of sine cubed x cosine x plus sine x cosine x dx. Okay, so um, here's the thing. This ends up being an odd function. Now, how do you test that? Well, you could graph it, and you can see it's an odd function, or you could do the odd function test, which says that uh, uh, f of negative x is equal to f of, as negative f of x. So f of negative x equals negative f of x. So if you look back at your pre-calculus notes that you had, um, this is on there. Um, so you had that, and you also had um, the even function was f of negative x was equal to f of positive x, if it's even. So um, you can test that. Um, so we would put uh, sine cubed of negative x times cosine of negative x plus sine of negative x cosine of negative x. And we just kind of simplify that and figure that out. So if you remember, uh, cosine uh, of negative x and cosine of positive x are the same thing. So I can just lose the, cos the, the negative here. Um, and if it's uh, sine of negative x, let's see, sine of negative x was equal to negative sine of x. And cosine of negative x was equal to just cosine of x. OK, so I can pull the negative out here. And then this is just cosine x. And I can pull the negative out here, cosine x. 
and then, oh, this is negative and this is negative, I can factor out a negative one. Okay, so here's my f of x, or my f of negative x, and this is negative f of x, just a negative of whatever this was. So this tells me this is odd. It's an odd function. which tells me I don't even need to integrate this because since it's going from negative A to positive A, the answer to this is gonna be zero. Boom, done. So I had to do a little, you know, I had to remember some stuff from pre-calculus, um, but it was very helpful. All right then, here's your assignment and the pages here for your homework. And, uh, of course, I put that in Google Classroom for you. So uh, take the, do, try that out assignment out, and, and uh, I'll see you next time.